Well, guys, this is a brand new chapter for kinetic chemistry, where we're going to continue to discuss the following topics. We're going to discuss rate of reaction, rate law, order of reaction, and rate constant, effect of temperature of the reaction kinetic, and the role of catalyst in the reactions. So, what is actually a rate of reactions? So, kinetic energy chemistry is the area of chemistry concerned with speeds or rate at which chemical reactions occur. In this case, we refer to the changes of the concentrations of a reactant or product with time. So generally, rate of reaction is inversely proportional with time. Therefore, longer the time taken, lower the rate of reactions. So let's, have, let's take an example for general chemical reactions where we have reactants become products. So for example, when A becomes B, as time passes, Concentration of A will decrease, while concentration of B will increase. So if you were to plot a graph of concentration against time, so this is generally a graph of A and B looks like. So from here, rate of reactions can be measured by, the, by using the tangent of the graph, where if we were to measure the initial rate of reactions, we should take the tangent from the graph intercepting at times t equals to zero. So this will be the initial rate for the concentration of A, where the rate of reaction can be expressed as difference of the uh, concentration over difference of the time. Whereas here, this is how we measure the concentration of the uh, rate of reaction for concentration of B. So rate is equals to BT, uh, B times minus B initial over t final minus t initial and here you can find out that the gradient is positive therefore rate is equals to db dt for a the rate is a negative rate so therefore negative da dt so in here note that why the rate of the concentrations for reactants is negative this is due to concentrations of reactant will decrease in time while why is it that the radi gradient for a product is positive that is because the reactions uh, the concentration of product increase with time so consider the following chemical equations where we have aa plus bb gives cc plus dd so for all the rate of reactions can be rate uh, right based on the following equations where you can write rate is equals to 1 over a da dt for reactant b also is a reactant therefore rate is equals to 1 over b dv dt since C is a product, therefore it is not negative, it is positive. 1 over C, dc, dt. And for D, which is also a product, so you have 1 over D, 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 d t. So as a conclusion, they can be written together in one line as the following. We have rate is equal to negative 1 over A, d, a over dt. Negative 1 over B, dv, dt. 1 over C, dc, dt. And 1 over D, 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 d t. For example, if we have 4 ammonia, we add with 5 oxygens to give 4 nitrogen monoxide plus 6 water gas. So you have negative 1 over 4 dnh 3 dt. For oxygen, rate is equal to 1 over negative 1 over 5 DO2 dt. Concentration of the nitrogen monoxide, we have 1 over 4 dNO dt. And concentration for water is 1 over 6 dH2O dt. So as a conclusion, we can put them up together as negative 1 over 4 d negative 1 over 4 d and h3 dt equals to 1 negative 1 over 5 do 2 dt equals 1 over 4 d and o dt which is equals to 1 over 5 d h2 o dt. So that is all for the introductions. So we are going to go into details for this one. We are going to learn about the theories of the reaction rate. So collision theory is used to explain the effect of concentration and time on the rate of reactions. So the theory of reaction rate is based on three postulates, where number one, molecules must collide to react. Number two, molecules must collide at the right orientations. And number three, molecules must collide at the minimum amount of energy called as activation energy. So what is all these three main ideas or postulates for the reaction rate? So. The first one, where we said molecules must collide to react. So in here, we are going to use the effect of the concentration and also temperature to explain. So 
In order for a reaction to occur, there must be a physical interaction that takes place, where molecules must be collided with each other to form a chemical reaction. So rate of reaction is directly influenced by the following factors. The first one is in concentration. So as concentration increases, frequency of the collision occur become more rapid. So this will increase the chances for the effective collisions and increase the rate of reactions. So from the diagram below, we can see that if you have only two blue, two green particles collide with two red particles, there are only little collision take place. However, as the number of particles increase, we can see that the reaction rate, the collision rate for each of the particles increase gradually. So therefore, here we can say that greater the number of particles, greater the collision rate, higher the rate of reactions. Second factor is the factor of temperature. So when temperature increases, particles absorb kinetic energy supplied and stored. Particles with higher kinetic energy, it can move faster, and hence has a higher of frequency collisions between particles. So furthermore, high kinetic energy allows more particles to have energy greater than activation energy, hence increase the rate of reactions. The second postulate is molecules must collide in the right orientation in order to react to form the right products. So consider the following reactions where you have 2AB give A2 plus 2B. So for the reaction to take place, when molecules collide, it must collide under the right correct way in order for that particular reaction to happen. For example, if from above reactions, we say that 2AB give A2 plus 2B. So between the A and B, they must collide correctly in order to form A2 in here. So if the molecule collide at the right or wrong way or wrong orientations, its position is not correct and the reaction may not occur as illustrated in the diagram below. Third one is molecules must possess certain laws kinetic energy called as activation energy. So even if the condition uh, A and B above has been fulfilled, does it mean that the reaction can occur? Let's have a look at the diagram below. As you can see in here, even though A and B has collided at the right orientation, but at the end, no product is formed. It is still maintained on the original A and B. So why is this happening? So this is due to the collision is too gentle and therefore does not produce an effective collision. So, in order for this effective collision to take place, you must have a minimum amount of energy, called as activation energy, to take place, only then a reaction can occur. So what is activation energy? So activation energy is defined as the minimum amount of energy required to initiate a chemical reaction. So in order for a reaction to take place, there must be a certain amount of energy absorbed in order for the molecules which collide in the right orientation to happen. As discussed in the previous chapter in Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions, when temperature increases, more particles has energy greater than high activation energy, and this will increase the rate of reactions. Now, activation energy is always an endothermic process as heat is required in order for molecule to collide effectively and form a new compound. So energy profile below shows the for both endothermic and exothermic. So this is the energy profile for endothermic while this is the energy profile for exothermic. So this is where activation energy is measured for endothermic and exothermic. So that is for the first part for this video. So hopefully you will enjoy. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.